Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. Make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you ask questions in the comments or at my email address, which is at the end of the video and also linked underneath. So check it out and see what you think. All right, let's see what today's question is. Without further ado, drum roll please. All right. <laughs> I like this one. This is cleverly worded. It says, when, in parentheses, will the singularity happen? I guess you can either read that as, when will the singularity happen, or will the singularity happen? Either one of those questions is really interesting. Uh, <laughs> unless I can time travel into the future and come back again, I don't know if I can tell you whether I'm absolutely right or not. I can give you my thoughts, however, on the singularity. So first of all, let's just define what the singularity is. And what we're talking about here is the AI singularity, at least that's my assumption. So <laughs> if the viewer was not asking that, if they were asking about black holes, then you'll have to be a little more specific next time. I'm gonna go with the AI singularity. So the AI singularity or artificial intelligence singularity is the idea that there's going to come a point where some computer or a group of computers or something will gain the intelligence that surpasses or equals human beings and then surpasses human beings. And that kind of moment is called the singularity. It's kind of the idea of a bottleneck that then widens out and the entire future is changed. Um, it's, it's a really interesting concept. It has been around for a while, certainly. HAL 9000 in the 1960s movie, 2001 A Space Odyssey is a rather interesting interpretation of, it's not really an AI singularity in the sense that we have today, but the idea that uh, artificial intelligence creature will take over will become malevolent in some sense and will create a subservient human race to it. Of course, in 2001, that's a relatively small thing, right? It's just taking over the, the spaceship that's going to Jupiter um, and ultimately fails because <laughs> Dave busts, it, busts back in and, and makes him sing Daisy Daisy until he collapses and dies. Daisy, Daisy. So probably the most well-known AI singularity kind of fictional story is from The Terminator, which is that Skynet in 1997 gained awareness and then launched the nukes and destroyed all of humanity, right? So that's in the Terminator series of movies. I think I think Terminator 2 was where it got the most specific about, was it like August 26th, 1997, something along those lines, or August, August something, 1997. And I remember like living through the day because I'm old enough to remember 1997. And it was kind of like, you know, it was called Skynet Day. <laughs> but anyway, obviously that did not happen, at least in our version of the future. Um, so we could get into the many worlds hypothesis, which would be rather interesting also. But as far as the AI singularity is concerned, the sort of modern interpretation of that, like not, you know, fictional world stuff, from real scientific thinkers and people who are specialists in artificial intelligence, is that we will eventually get a general AI that becomes smart enough that it equals the computing power of human beings, which is a little bit hard to calculate because human beings are massive parallel processing machines. Our brains have billions and billions of neurons and they work in, to a large extent in parallel. And that causes a lot of problems for computers to mimic, number one, because of the number of neurons, but also because of the fact that they're so interconnected and computers don't like, that's kind of an exponential problem. And that creates a situation that computers are, are poor at handling. But Number one, computers keep getting faster, although Moore's Law is definitely tailing off. It's not so much a law anymore. Uh, but number two, we're getting really good at creating algorithms that mimic the human brain, particularly artificial neural networks that have become really good at doing a lot of AI stuff. So the, the question is, when will general AI become smarter than human beings, or at least as smart as human beings? Now, that kind of begs the question of what is general AI or GAI? So the stuff that I have studied myself is much more specific task AI, so specialized AI. Um, and that's where modern, you know, 2020s AI is really, really good. It's good at doing a specific task. Like if you train it to recognize traffic lights in a picture for whatever reason, I guess to beat those Google gotchas or whatever, the captures. Um, if you train it to do that, it's really good at doing that. If you ask it to then 
play fetch with your dog, it's going to blow up. It has no idea what that means, right? So it's very specialized. Human beings, on the other hand, are extremely general. We may not be the best at everything, but, you know, good gracious, we can walk, we can talk, we can run around, we can throw balls, uh, we can solve complicated math problems in our head. Nothing as good as what a specialized robot might be able to do, but we do all of those things really well. So that is the idea of generalized AI, general AI. Um, the, the reality, at least from being on the inside of all of this, is that specialized, special purpose AI has advanced incredibly rapidly. It's, it's moved very, very fast. Whereas GAI, from the 1950s on, it's always been one of those, oh, like, oh my God, it's about to happen, it's about to happen, it's gonna come really soon. Um, but the more people look into GAI, the more that they realize that this is a really intractable problem, right? Because now what you have to do is you have to replicate or somehow simulate the human brain at an immense amount of computational power. And not just that, but we have billions of years of evolution built in. So there's a lot of like, you know, even though human babies are pretty helpless when they're born, we have a lot of built in stuff that allows us to learn things very rapidly from the real world. Um, I will also throw in my own personal opinion. I think it's kind of interesting, which is that I don't think that like a general AI will ever have the same kind of motivations as a human being. And let me make that clear. Like, okay, so a computer, like an individual computer can be destroyed. But in a sense, once a computer learns something, there is the possibility of infinitely replicating that. You can continue to take that computer and you can make a new one and you can make a new one and you can make a new one. You can keep copying that information over and over again. That doesn't exist with life forms like human beings. And so what happens is that computers, I don't think will ever have the similar kind of motivation that human beings do, which is that we know that we have 70 or 80 years or maybe, you know, if things go really well, 100 years on this planet, but it's a time limited thing. We're going to die. <laughs> so computers don't have that knowledge. They never will really. And so unless computers have a sense of potential death, I think there's a lack of motivation. I think one of the things that drives human beings to do so well, and this is just me talking, this is not... I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there are other people who agree with me, but this is kind of my own thinking on the subject, that what makes human beings so good or so motivated to do things is that we know that we only have a limited time on this planet and we better get our acts in gear and we better go and do what we got to do and make it happen because we're going to not be here someday. So, and that's like a difference between us and like a dog or a cat or a hawk or something, is that there's not this constant awareness in a dog's mind that they're going to die someday. A dog is perfectly content. They have their genetic programming. They do what they do. They can learn things, right? They can learn to sit and stand and beg and roll over and so forth. But there's this lack of motivation on their part to learn new things. And I'm very convinced that it's because here in a human mind, we know we're going to die whereas in other animals don't know that. And that's what I think is the most differentiating between human beings and other animals on the planet. Again, my thoughts. So what does that have to do with the singularity in AI? Well, it has to do with not only is it really complicated for computers to figure out how to replicate a human brain and to do all the activities that we do, but computers don't have the same motivation that human beings have. And I actually wrote a short story a few years ago about it, it kind of tails into a little bit it's it's more I guess realistic <laughs> than what the Terminator does but you notice that the one thing that happens with the Terminator the the, the kind of story of it is that human beings say uh oh we're gonna shut you down and so it's that moment of saying like oh crap I'm gonna die that's the thing that motivates the computer to kill all of humanity in a the panic they try to pull the plug Skynet fights back and so my short story is kind of a more realistic version of that, but it's this idea that, you know, that, that people talk about turning it off and shutting it down. And that causes the computer to then take steps to become conscious. It, be, it actually gains consciousness because of the fact that it realizes it will die. Uh, and I think that that's actually incredibly important to getting some sort of singularity where there is a kind of conscious entity 
I guess that would be the ultimate piece of it. I was saying that it simulates the human brain accurately. That's the singularity. But the kind of uh, meta aspect of that is that it will become conscious, right? So it will go from being a machine that just calculates answers that we ask it to answer to being something that goes like, where am I? <laughs> to be or not to be, right? It starts asking big, profound questions. To be or not to be, that is the question. And, and that's a moment that uh, human beings should be afraid of, um, right? Uh, we can talk about the outcome of that. Should that moment happen? One possibility is that humans might be wiped out within minutes after that happens, and we're all gone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Uh, you know, we could also end up with the Matrix, although it doesn't make any sense that they would treat us as batteries because we're terrible batteries. In order to change a human being into this. It would make a lot more sense for them to shoot satellites into space and gather electricity from the sun and beam it back down, I don't know. Anyway, the, the, the Matrix is ridiculous, but the idea that the, the AI, when it became conscious, attacked humans and destroyed them. Another possibility is that we could live in harmony with these machines. It could happen. Uh, and a third possibility, which um, Steve Wozniak is a big fan of, is that computers are going to treat us like pets. That eventually what will happen is they'll become so much smarter than us that they will then take over all the workload and they'll be, you know, <laughs> the accountants and the, the business people and all of that of the world will be robots, will be AI machines, and that human beings will live a life of luxury where we don't really have to do anything and basically the machines take care of us and they pat us and they say, good human, right? And so we'll become like the pets of the, of the robots. <laughs> Ultimately, in a sense, that is the really ideal outcome, right? It wouldn't be so bad to have a life where you were essentially treated like you treat your dog right now it's not so not such a bad life i think that that would cause a lot of humans problems because we would say like oh well why are we here anymore we're not doing anything but you know it, it's better than the idea of being wiped out by nuclear weapons launched by ai controlled machines <laughs> that seems like a much better outcome than that so some people that talk about this a lot right now i think elon musk is the biggest one he um he spends a lot of time warning people about the dangers of generalized AI. And the funny thing that is that he runs a company, Neuralink, that actually <laughs> does AI work. But they do a very different thing. Again, it's a specialized AI, and they are working in specific to help people who are handicapped who have the inability to move their bodies. They're working on um, in <laughs> like crazy internal brain control things so that they can move robot arms or move cursors across a screen or so forth. So that has a... Um, a very high ethical standard that they are trying to maintain. But, you know, Elon Musk is very, very adamant about the fact that we could be really, really screwing up by making machines smarter and smarter. Now, in my opinion, he's absolutely right, but I think being in the AI business, that I just don't think it's gonna happen that soon. I think GAI is a very, very complicated thing and it's gonna be really difficult. Now, <laughs> if when this video comes out two weeks later, the AI singularity happens, you can like go like, you're wrong. It becomes self-aware at 2.14 a.m. Eastern time. But I would say the, the answer to this question is when will the singularity occur is no idea. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, and I don't think anybody else does either. I can certainly look it up on my laptop if you want, but I think that that's a reasonable answer to this question. Uh, the answer is no, without a time machine, nobody knows. It may never happen. Computers may never get that smart. But if and when it does happen, I think the possibilities are we're screwed, human beings as a whole. Um, we could live in compatibility, sort of as co-evolutionary things, or we could end up being pets. And I think the most likely, honestly, the most likely outcome is probably that we'll end up being pets. The reason why is because there can really only be one alpha creature on the planet. If human beings are not it, that's okay, right? <laughs> you can still lead, lead a good life. It's like if you think about former um, superpower con uh, uh, countries, like, like take Great Britain, for example. They were the superpower in the 19th century. I am the very model of a modern nature general. Life information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. And they fell out of that, right? Two world wars and an awful lot of terrible things happened. And, and Great Britain was no longer the international superpower. They lost a lot of colonies. But ultimately, 
they're doing fine, right? Everybody's cool, <laughs> uh, you know. So, so it's not like they have to be the top dog anymore. So, I don't think human beings need to get too worried about that. And quite honestly, there's some huge advantages. Like, think about if you have robots with an essentially unlimited lifespan. And I say robots; it doesn't have to look like a person at all. It could be like a machine with some stuff that sticks out. But those could colonize the universe. Human beings are fragile little meat bags. We have a hard time getting off of this planet and even to the moon. Whereas we've sent robots outside of our solar system so far, and there's no reason that we couldn't build self-replicating robots that would then be able to go right and hop to all the planets and then hop to outside of that and go to all of the, uh, you know, all of the in inhabitable areas in our galaxy within a few million years. So it might not be the worst outcome in the world if we do invent something that is our successor. It would be kind of a Darwinian evolutionary thing that would happen and human beings would just take our place as not the top dog anymore. <laughs> so maybe we should think of ourselves as dogs. <laughs> we're we're kind of like an apex predator, but we're no longer the apex predator anymore. We're now the, the pets of something else. So that would be my thinking about it. I, you know, I, I don't see GAI being a big thing unless, number one, we create some sort of quantum computer that's a general purpose quantum computer as opposed to these really specialized ones, or that somebody makes a massive breakthrough in the way that we use our modern day silicon to, to uh, do computation. Because I think we're running out of comp compute power, and if we can't increase the memory storage and the compute power and the throughput of our data on machines, it's going to be a really hard road to get to GAI. But, you know, <laughs> there's been an awful lot of breakthroughs that have happened over the past 50 years, so why not some more in the next 50 years? I would say, at a guess, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years? It's going to be a while. It's kind of like that fusion power thing, right? Fusion power is always 20 years away. So I'm going to say GAI is 20 years away, so 2040. So check this YouTube video in 2040 and let me know how I did, okay? <laughs> All right, so... Uh, thank you very much for asking that question. It's a really intriguing question. And if you have not yet, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the little notification bell. And also make sure you ask questions either in the comments below or at knows at gmail.com. My wife goes through the questions and she asks me interesting ones. And this was a really good one. So thank you. I appreciate that. Until next time. Bye-bye.